Good morning, everybody. I am finally coming to you from Colorado. Um, currently, I'm coming to you from the inside of the KOA laundry room. We have about a week and a half left here, and then we'll get some little better videos going from, uh, from hopefully my condo for the year. But for now, this is where I'm coming from. I apologize for the horribly bright light above my head, but if nothing else, you should be able to see me really well today. All right, so our workout today, we have two blocks and everything is timed. The first block is gonna be 60 seconds through each exercise. The second block is gonna be 30 seconds through each exercise. First block we have twice through. Second block we have four times through. All right, equipment wise, you're going to need your kettlebell and some dumbbells. Um, if you don't have a kettlebell, you're just looking for a nice heavy weight. All righty, so we're gonna start with our kettlebell lateral return lunges. If it's been a while since you've done these or you don't remember these, no worries. On the return lunges, lateral meaning we're gonna go sideways. So we're gonna step into a lateral lunge. Instead of stepping together, we're just gonna shift back the other direction to lunge onto the other leg. Then we step all the way together. So then going back the other way, I've got a lateral lunge on my left, shift it to my right, and back together. So on this one, we're gonna take our kettlebell, we're going to let it hang between the legs. All right, so kettlebell in hand. Um, my timing device is on the floor, so if you see me looking down a lot, that's what I'm looking at. Everybody ready? Shoulders back, abs in nice and tight. Get my other, other timer going so we're on track. Three. Two, one, here we go. Lateral lunge right, shift it to the left, and together, back the other way, left, right, and together. Keep it going, I'm gonna talk to you while you're going. Remember our cues when you go into that lateral lunge. Outside leg is the only one that bends, hips push back, like you're trying to stick your bottom back to a chair behind you, but chest stays as tall as you can. When you shift, make sure you come through those straight legs to shift it to the other side. Press really hard out of that outside leg to get you back up nice and tall. Keeping it going. We are just past halfway. So right, left, together. Excellent. Try really hard on these 60 second rounds to stay moving the best you can. Focusing on that big range of motion. 10 seconds remaining. Last one coming up. And time, we're gonna set that kettlebell down. Meet me on the floor for our animal squat to pike. So what we're gonna do is combine our animal squat and our pike. So up in that plank position, ready? Here we go, keeping the knees low, push back to your animal squat, press back forward. Now we're gonna take it to a pike. Hips come up, abs in tight, and back forward and repeat. Animal squat to plank, and pike. Most important thing that I'm looking for on these is that every time you finish your animal squat or your pike, that you return to that solid plank. So once you hit that plank, you wanna check shoulders over the hands, abs pulled in nice and tight, hips open, but glutes squeezed, armpits closed off, meaning that you're rotating your shoulders into your rib cage, or rotating your upper arm into your rib cage. We are almost there, guys. Five seconds to go. Last one, and time. We are moving into our dumbbell curtsy lunge with curl. I currently do not have a set of dumbbells, so I'm gonna hold my fist, pretending that I'm holding my weights. So on our curtsy lunge, remember, everything starts facing forward. One leg is gonna cross behind, as if you're doing a curtsy. Most of our weight's gonna be on that front leg. Chest nice and tall. We're looking for a good bend, a hip press out to the side, so that you feel 
butt, glute, medius getting a good squeeze. We're going to come back together, both feet on the ground, bicep curl. Other leg, cross it over, press that hip out, back together, and curl. Excellent. Continuing on, alternating legs each time. As these curtsy lunges become more familiar, what you're looking to feel is a good amount of healthy strain usage out of that glute medius of the leg in front. So as I press that hip out sideways, I want to feel a stretch through that glute medius. As you stand up, pressing through that front heel, you want to feel that glute giving you a nice squeeze at the top. Excellent. Very good, guys. We are getting close. About 10 seconds remaining. Let's give it one more good one here. And set those dumbbells down. We're going to head to the end of your mat. Last exercise on this round. It's going to be our walkout with the push-up. So remember, we're focusing on our walkout with the knees staying nice and straight. Try to really use the shoulders and the abs to get you back up. Everybody ready? The end of your mat, big stretch to the sky. Touch those toes, abs in tight. We're going to walk on out there. When you get there, if you can stay on your feet and give me a nice range of motion push-up, do so. If not, drop to those knees. Give me the biggest bend you can and then back to that plank before walking back. And rinse and repeat. Huh? Rinse and repeat fit really well for the laundry room. Did not mean to do that. Awesome, guys. Remember on this one, if you're struggling to keep those knees straight, another option is to take your feet out a little bit wider towards a little bit more of a straddle. It takes a little bit of the flexibility need out of this one, making it slightly easier to get back up. We are almost there, guys. This is going to be our last one coming up. Strong push-up, abs tight, walking it back. We have finished round one on block one. We got round two coming up. So we're going back to your kettlebell. Give you a second to get it picked up. We have our lateral return lunges first. So last time through these exercises. In position, kettlebell hanging down nice and low abs in nice and tight. I'm going to go to the right first. Here we go. To the right, shift left, and together. Left, right, and together. Very good. On this round, the exercises should feel a little bit more familiar. For most of us, that means you can pick up your pace a little bit. Pick up your challenge. I apologize that I am so breathless. I'm still getting used to the altitude here, especially when exercising. 15 seconds remaining. Excellent job, guys. Keep pushing. We're almost there. And time. Set that down. We're down to the floor for our animal squat. Animal squat to pike. Plank position. Catch your breath. Those lateral return lunges will get that heart rate up pretty high. All right, check that plank position. Shoulders are over the wrist. Uh, upper arms rotated into the armpits and ribs. Abs in tight. Animal squat, here we go. Reach it back, back to plank, push back to pike, and center. Excellent job. As you press back in that pike, think about making the movement happen by lifting up through the abdominal.
abdominals, almost as if you have a string connected from your seat from the ceiling to your belly button, and you are pulling with that string to lift your hips up. If you notice on this one that when you pike, you slide back just a little bit every time. When you get back to that plank, just adjust the hands, no big deal. We got 10 seconds remaining. We are almost there. All right, I'm gonna take one more animal squat. Excellent job, come on up. We're back to our dumbbells. for our curtsy lunge with bicep curl. Dumbbells in hand, facing me, shoulders rolled back, abs in nice and tall. Remember as you step back, we're gonna cross the body, press that front hip out to the side. Nice big bend, sit and curl. Here we go, cross it over, step together, Strong bicep curl. Now best you can on these, try really hard not to use the swinging momentum to get those arms up on the curl. Wait until you've stepped all the way together, body is motionless, and then take that, one, that uh, bicep curl. If you use your momentum to curl, yes, it will be easier. However, we won't always want easier. It's not often that we work our biceps by themselves, especially when we are working on more efficient workouts, trying to get as much workout in as little time as possible. So we wanna make sure that we take that opportunity to really work those biceps. Last one coming up. Excellent job. Set those dumbbells down. We're back to the floor for our walkout with push-up. So this is the last one on round one here. And then we'll take a quick breather. Here we go, 60 seconds. Big reach up, touch those toes. Walk on out there. Find that strong plank. One big push up. Walk it back. As soon as you get there, reach it up, down to the ground. Couple things on that reach up. While wow, that stretch feels oh so nice at the top, try not to spend too much time there and warm up and cool down. You can take the extra time in that position and really focus on letting the body go and stretching tall. But in our workout, we want to move through it a little bit faster so we can get an extra walk out or two in there in our time allotted. Good job, guys. We have 10 seconds going. Give me one more. All right, and time. Grab yourself a drink of water. Most likely, on this last round, you are going to need only your kettlebell or your heaviest of weights. Um, we're gonna be doing single side stuff, just part of the reason for the 30 seconds. We're gonna start with the kettlebell in our left hand. We're gonna do our deadlifts first for 30 seconds. We'll keep it in that left hand for our rows. Then we'll switch sides for both exercises. Then we'll finish with some sumo squats, all with our kettlebell or heaviest weight that you have. If you need to switch weights at any point in there, please do so. I just want you to start heavy. So if you can make 20 seconds with that big heavy weight and then switch for the last 10, that's okay. When you get to the next round, try to start with that heavy one again, even if you only get 15 seconds that next round. But in order to build our strength and continue building our strength, we wanna make sure that we start heavy every time. Okay, cut the on left hand. We are taking our single leg deadlift here. So I'm gonna stand on my right leg with kettlebell in my left hand. So we're standing opposite kettlebell to leg on the ground. 
my left leg, my kettlebell side leg is gonna come up in the air. Keeping a little bit of a bend in that right leg, leg I'm standing on, I'm gonna tip over at the hips and then stand it back tall. All right guys, 30 seconds, same side, here we go. Take your time on them. A big part of this challenge is just the balance that we're putting on that bottom leg. The distance that you tip forward is not as important as the position that you're in. So nice straight back line, almost there. Give me one more. And time, we're gonna keep the same leg that was on the floor, on the floor in front. So I got my kettlebell in my left hand. My left leg is behind me. This should already feel a little bit more challenging because that front glute's already tired. Now we're gonna make it work a little bit more on our row. So we got 30 seconds, here we go. Focus on your range of motion. Bend in both knees, support it on that front leg. Excellent guys, keep pulling. Tuck that elbow around the body. Abs strong, one more time. All right, switching sides. So now we got kettlebell in right hand. I'm standing on my left leg. Abs in nice and tight. Deadlift, three, two, one. Here we go. Excellent. That heavy weight is going to want to pull that arm to the ground. Try hard not to let it, oop, it got me on that one. Try hard not to let it win, beating you to the ground before you can let that back leg come up. Last one. And we're gonna take it to a row Still right hand on the kettlebell. My left leg is in front, leaning down on that leg. Big row. Here we go. You will notice that one side will feel stronger on these rows, especially if you have the opportunity to go heavy enough on that dumbbell. So really focus on abs staying tight. On the weaker side, try really hard not to let momentum lead the way. Try to keep those shoulders and chest facing the ground. Force the lat and the bicep to do your work. Last one coming up. All right, kettlebell still with us. Sumo squat. Letting it hang right down between. Feet are nice and wide, toes turned out. Knees are going to where the toes are pointing. Here we go, sit it down low and return. By this point, your glutes are probably talking to you. They were used quite a bit on those first two exercises, more so on the row than we realize. So you should be feeling them as you stand back up. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and time. All right, I'm gonna give you about a 30 second breather Talking gets me pretty breathless, so it's hard to judge a little bit how breathless you will be. We are one round down on these four rounds. Going back to our deadlift with the kettlebell in the left hand, standing on the right leg. All right, everybody. Kettlebell in hand, standing on that opposite leg, abs in tight, three, two, one, here we go, reach, good, more than anything, if you're not sure, if you're doing this one with a nice flat back, think only about using your back leg to tip you over, don't even think about what your chest is doing, 
Make your chest stay up nice and high. And time. Right leg in front, row position, left hand on that cowbell. Here we go. Big range of motion. Let that kettlebell come all the way back down to the ground. If you feel like you can't reach your kettlebell to the ground, make sure it's your forearm that's bent over on that knee. It's going to bring your back closer to horizontal or parallel to the ground. And time. Switching sides. Right hand on kettlebell. Standing on the left. Deadlift. Here we go. Fight that balance. Try not to immediately put your foot down when you get to the top. Even if you need it to correct your balance a little bit, try to force your body to give it a second before you touch that foot. Last one coming up. And to that row, left foot in front, right hand on kettlebell, nice flat back, chest is low, here we go. Turn around for a better view. For most of us, if we started with our left side, you're now on your right side. It's probably your dominant side. So this side might feel a little bit better. Last one. And sumo squat. We're going to try to go right into it. Feet wide, toes out. Here we go. Awesome, guys. Pushing those knees wide. Opening the hips. Squeeze the glutes. Can you give me 10 seconds? Almost there. Last one. All right. I'll give you that 30 seconds again to catch your breath. Grab a sip. You guys are doing great. We have two rounds remaining on these del uh, dead dettlebell, on your deadlift and kettlebell rows. So we're going back to the left side first, staying on the right leg. Chest up nice and tall. Ready, three, two, one, here we go. Oh, got a little bit of a lean, if you can. Make sure that you fix that balance before you go into the next one. Whether you are able to do three each round or six each round. And time. Whether you're able to do three each round or six each round, focusing on that balance is what's important. So don't get frustrated if you feel like you only get a couple each time. You're spending that 30 seconds still working on that balance. Still in the left hand, we've got our row. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good. For most of us, this is that weaker side. So focus on keeping everything facing the ground. Abs in nice and tight. Press that front heel into the ground. 10 seconds. One more. All right, switching sides. Right hand on that kettlebell. Left leg on the ground. Abs in nice and strong. Here we go. Lifting from that back leg, tucking it in. One thing we haven't talked about is what that back leg is supposed to be doing. There's no right or wrong. If it feels better to you, to keep that back leg nice and straight, that's fine. If it feels better to you to keep it bent, that's fine too. You just want to make sure that it goes with you. Think about it like a, uh, a teeter-totter. The leg's got to go with you in order for everything to stay nice and straight. Three, two, one. Set that leg down. Right hand still on the kettlebell. Row. Here we go. 
This is our third round on these rows. We are almost to the end of round three in all, and then we'll only have one final round to go. 10 seconds. Last one. And back to those sumo squats. Chest nice and tall, feet out. Here we go, wide squat. Squeeze to return. As you come back to the middle, remember that we want the hips to press forward and the glutes to squeeze. Try not to lock out those knees. And then try to keep the chest nice and tall still. You lean too far forward, you're gonna make it more of a rocking action or a kettlebell swing action. We want it to feel like it's all squat through the hips and the knees. Three, two, one. Quick 30 second break, it's your last one. Then we'll hit our final round. Good job, guys. This workout should feel a little tougher than some of the other ones have been lately. Mostly because we've gone heavier with that weight. Anytime you can challenge the weight that you're holding, even if you can't do the full 30 seconds, anytime you can up that weight, the more you're going to get out of the workout. All right, guys, this is our final round. Kettlebell left hand, standing on right leg. Three, two, one, here we go. Going for that full 30 seconds. How many can you do? Try not to touch that foot. Oop, I only got two. <laughs> By now you've also probably realized that as you get more tired, your balance gets a little harder because all those muscles in the feet and time, all the muscles in your feet and the supporting muscles around your knees and your hips, they get tired too. All right, left hand still on. Taking that row in three, two, one. Here we go. Big range of motion, guys. If you've still got that heavy kettlebell in your hand and it's getting super heavy, this last round is where you can add a little bit of momentum to help it out. Rotating that shoulder, just keep the abs super tight. And time. Woo, switching hands. Right hand kettlebell. Left leg, left leg on the ground. Three, two, deadlift, here we go. Last round on this side on deadlift. Find that balance. Pick a spot out in front. Don't take your eyes off of it. Ten seconds. And time. Take it to that row. Last row, guys. We're one minute from the end here. Three, two, one. Here we go. Big pull back. Being the dominant side, you may be able to keep momentum out of it this time. But do your best. If you gotta add a little right at the end, just make sure those abs are pulling tight. Last one coming up. All right, right into it. Kettlebell centered, feet wide. 30 seconds, here we go. If you can, try to sit long enough to tap that kettlebell. Awesome. We got this, guys, we got 10 seconds. Don't quit, don't quit. Almost there. Two more. Last one. All right, sit it down. Woo. Give yourself a pat on the back. Great workout today, excellent job. Make sure you do this one again. Next week will be a little bit of a variation on this, but we're gonna try to keep that heavy weight going for a while. Good job today, everybody. Thanks for being with me. Have a great week.